we have the distinguished presence of His Eminence, Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuru Sharabutu. He is the National Chief Imam of the Republic of Ghana. As recent as last Tuesday, he turned 100. That's indeed amazing. So this morning, we're here at his residence in New Fadama to catch up with him and ask him his thoughts about a few national issues and how he's survived 100 years without sweat, I must say. And uh, to my right will be Sheikh Aramea, who is a spokesperson for the National Chief Imam. He will be running the uh, interpretation for us. Your Eminence, happy birthday to you one more time. Madam Wayna Mukabarka, the Samo Sheikh Shikarat Ari. We are thankful to God for his favor of giving us this hundred years of, 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 of life. And all right. I'm thankful to God bringing me 100 years in good health and in vitality. I'm able to do things on my own. I'm in full control of my mind. I'm able to read and do everything on my own. And I'm grateful to God because there are those who are not yet 100 years are unable to do that, some of the things that I'm able to do. And, and so it's a great favor from God and grace that I'm very grateful to God. Your Eminence, the World Health Organization pegged Ghana's life expectancy in 2018 at 63.3. How do you feel today being a centenarian, healthy, happy, and strong? <laughs> Chicken earring yonder, Aka Masuki, Stawa, Yawan Shaker, Romota, and Suka Aji, what to Chicken Gana Nangade, Zamotun, Zera, Zera, Yude, Yakmata, Kaiga, Shakara, come and sit in, sit in the Bierne, the one, the one at Ego, to Amaga Kashika Kai, Shakara, Shakara, Eddy, Yakaki, G, Kayaka Samoanga, Erin, Karavi Haka Kaiga, Wanga, Shakaru Yakaki, G. Since she boy, Alani, Alay, for the last name in the boy, the Mako Wanda. Mukatashi Mukaji and Makaranta Tari, Dujanzu, Basu, Dare. I go on the Mukai Karatu the Su, Mukai Kumashi Nai Karatu, Mala Mala Aurantano. Would you cut a book as a chicken one to Sukai Karatu Aurinsa? It's the grace of God. Um, my contemporaries, many are no more, and but I'm still alive. Um, those of my generation, if I can remember, um, especially those that I studied with mm. in Kumasi when I was going through my, my studies, learning the Islamic sciences, I can remember only one person that I can remember who is alive now. So it is somebody of my generation and my also kind of life. Mm. Um, I can think of only one person who was my contemporary, I mean, in, in learning. Yeah. And so therefore, I must yeah, say that it's, it's God's grace. I, it's not my doing, it's, it's God's favor that has given me this kind of long life. Right. One other person also I can remember of my generation is currently my current Deputy National Chief Imam, um, who due to old age also, he, ha he has become weak and uh, he's not in very good health and so he's not very, very strong. Okay. Um, so I can remember him also as part of those of my generation mm -hmm. and he is in Accra here. For him, we studied together in Accra here. Right. Yes, uh -huh. but the other, the other one of my generation who, is, who was my, my mate, I mean, in learning, is also the one who is in Kumasi. Right. Yes. Your, your Eminence, what is the single truth about life that we must learn in terms of living life full and dying empty in the end? Ga Awa the Allah Bisu, Kakama Allah, Kana Ibada, Ka Uncle Lenka, Kari Zu Shatkin Shining, Shashanchi Nadunia, 
Yeah, the, the first thing that you, you must uphold God. <clears throat> In other words, make put God at the center of your life. That's one. Two, also lead a life in line with the will of God. Go by his commandments. Uh, make the the message or the mission of God, the light that shines ahead of you, mm. that guides you in every step that, that, that you make. That, um, that is it. As a person, when you are growing, you want to get closer to God and, and, and maintain God at the center of your life. Avoid all evil things and immoral things. Mm. If you are able to uphold these three di dimensions of life, life will be fruitful for you and life will be lived in fullness. Your, your Eminence, you were born in 1919. You have seen the pre-colonial times post-colonial times, you have seen presidents right from President Nkrumah all the way to Nana Dodakwe Kufuado. What is it that we are missing in terms of comparison with countries like Malaysia, whom we got our independence within the same year? Malawai chikiwonga rai wada kasamu kagan zaman na na siyasa da banda banda bang tunda ga zaman nkwa min kurma hazwa luka chinga da muke chiki akwa wana abanda zaka tuna na na jin dadi ko kuma na wani damuwa in ka kwatanta wa zaman da yayi wuce da na zaman zaman gane yanzu akwai wani zaka tuna da kike ganin da abu na kaza muna jin dadi amma yanzu ba shi ko kuma yanzu ma halamari kuma ga yanda yake tafiya ko akwai wani zaman zaka tuna ni da na tashi dai ban kula da komi ba shi dai bauta Allah abin da na kula da shi kenan ban kula da komi ba shi dai bauta Allah ina dan shekara kaman kusan 20 nake darika yanzu na ka na kai shekara 80 cikin darikan tijaniya eh lokacin lokacin nan shiga darika ba wani dan akra nan dake darika ba wani yaro kuma dake yi bayan na karba kan nan alhaji kamal dine kuma shi ma ya karba um as far as i'm concerned uh my concern so much in life is to, is to be devoted to God. Mm. So uh, I live all right, I've, I've seen, but I have not been so much focused on what politicians do. Um, as early as, as early, very early in my life, 20 years, I joined the what we call the Tijania Sufi confraternity. Mm. Um, it's a mystical confraternity to which I belong to, and we call that one the T -T Tijania. Um, it's, it's, it's a mystical system that gets you faster, closer to God. Mm. And as young as 20 years, I have been part of this. And so 80 years of my life, I have been part of this. And so all my devotion, all my spirit, my mindset is all about God. And that is what remains my focus. I see. Eminence, let's talk about corruption. Every religion in Ghana frowns upon it. Christians, Hindus, uh, Muslims, everybody frowns upon it. But it doesn't seem to be going away, even though we preach about it in the mosques and the churches. What is the problem? Malam batung ching hanchi de rashawa. Um, I did not do ka sun kishi. I did not do ka kuana kuana for e kamang babi me kyobani. A matter read a hakanan. A labar and akisa machine, one nang abin yazaman a chiwo in a taramoshe chig away kik ari. Er, and the lakasa one kalma kachi, make a cow hakani, chicken halimo, the key ga chutamon sani, a makumashi akatashi mokete. So do ni ani, she or human as a chia. Simply, it is our inordinate desire for worldly things. We are so attached to wealth that we forget even what God wants for us. And in doing so, we keep on hurting ourselves. So the more corruption tribes, the more hurting and painful it is becoming for the very soul of our community. And, and therefore, it's something that we must do something to avoid. Our leaders want to end corruption, Your Eminence. Is it possible? Madam, why Shagabanim is acting as a son of you, young Kuri, son, and Nemosu Yakiwanga, Irinchio, Na Ching Hanchi, the Esar, the Rashawa, Kanaganing, Anna Yasamasa, watching one. Okay, so I'm very hopeful that if, if, they, if they put in, if they are determined, we will succeed. I'm very hopeful if we are all determined and we put our minds to it, we will win the battle. What would be the three top things that you would recommend for a nation like Ghana if we want to end corruption? Mm. 
da iya da ka fadi da yake inda za a bi ta kai za a samu nasarar ga da kake kake ambat kake nuna mana da ci ya kona za ka yi ba su masu wanda Allah ya ba su sarauta su ne za su goda ikon su su shiga ci su yi kokari kuma Allah ya taimake su a ciki wannan yana abin da yake gudana na gudana um what, what that i think is that it is those who are in political authority who god has entrusted this nation to who must make the stronger determination to continue because they are responsible to the citizenry and so they must make the effort and they must be so relentless and more committed uh, to this fight and if they do so final point is that god will be behind them and god will push them into success mm. your eminence a lot of most elderly people in this country have said that the youth of today are too ambitious in trying to get wealth so they do all manner of things um is it your opinion that this holds true and if it is what can we do to save the youth mala labar da muke samu ko kuma abinda muke lura da shi shine matasan mu na zamani ba su da hankuri wannan fiskar neman arziki saboda suna gaggawa wurin ta wurin tara arziki wannan yasa su sukan shiga wasu muggan hali da wasu kamar abubuwan da ake yi wanda ke bai dace ba um kana sane da irin wanga abin da ke gudana ko kuma kuma wani me za a gaya musu ya zama su daina irin wannan tafiya gaya musu ne ya musu wa'azi duk wani Allah zai baka wani kyauta nashi shi ka wahala an kai wahala shi Allah ya baka kyauta nashi an kai wahala kai samari in kai kokari tsoho ma shi zai duka gaban ka ina neman karatu saboda me saboda wahalar da kai Allah ya maka bai ban karatu nan ya to da duka gare ka saboda kokari ya kamata samaru na su yi da mutu cin magodin su na falalan ubangiji all that i can say is that our young people should be able to determine to to crystallize in their minds what is their ambition and to be patient with life and understand that god's favor is so abundant okay. it's abundant for us but it requires a certain genuine effort to be able to obtain i mean those favors if you are a young person and you take the positive approach to seeking wealth and you get it even in seeking any kind of success including knowledge elderly people will come and sit at your feet in order because they obtain also the blessings which god has given you so an example is that if you are a young person you are knowledgeable you will find elderly people will come to you because they also want to drink from the fountains of your knowledge right. and similarly if you are wealthy also and you in a very positive manner you can have people who can come to you and from your generosity they will also have hope mm. your eminence let's talk about interfaith tolerance you've been uh, a major preacher of that kind of thing your attendance for service at the Christ the King church has sparked a lot of controversy uh number one why did you choose the catholic church to attend and number two did you go there to worship um mala musa mula bari ka kai ziyara um zuwa ga church nan ga saboda saboda tunawa da batun abokin shekarun ka shekarun ka dari wannan ya tada wani irin kaimi da jin dadi a wani huskan kuma wadansu ma sun samu mummunan fahimta ga wannan um wani irin nufi ka samu ne yasa maka kai wanga irin irin ziyara wannan wurin ko kuma kuma wani guri kake so ka cimma da yasa kai ka je ga wanga wanga irin wuri wadanda ba addini mu guda ba Allah ya ci Allah bai hana mu mu yi musu da garta ba mu yi mu alaka da su ba wanda ba addini mu guda ba domin aya ya zo a cikin alqur'ani la yana hakumul lahu anil ladhina lam yuqatilukum fi ddini walam yukhrijukum min diyarikum an tabaru Allah bai hana kuwa gabarin wadannan da ba su yake ku saboda addini ba su kuma ku ba Allah bai hana ku yi musu garta ba ku yi mu'amala da su eh inda zai zama maslaha gari ku Allah bai hana ku ba Allah bai hana ba um my motivation um for taking this step of firming up interfaith dialogue and interfaith understanding that led me to visit the church has a textual reference in the quran chapter 6 um chapter 60 uh, verse 8 and 9 uh, this is the foundation of my relationship with practitioners of other faith um i'm encouraged by this text to stretch a hands of friendship 
and show that even though we belong to different faith, we can still engage together. And doing so also in the larger interest of society and in the larger interest of humanity. Mm. Did he go there to worship? Uh, no, I didn't go there to worship. I didn't go to worship. It was a visit of friendship, um, stretching a hand, or a hand of friendship across the religious divide and to show um, in a, living at peace with practitioners of, of other faith is a possibility. And this has sent this signal so strongly to the world. My final question. <laughs> And Allah also, one other text that inspires me to do what I do with respect to interfaith dialogue, uh, an intercultural dialogue, if you like, is one other text of the Holy Quran by which humanity is invited by God. And he used a particular kind of um, vocative language, we say, oh, you mankind. And he said, in this language, there's no discrimination, cultural or political or, or racial. He said, all mankind that I created you from Adam and Eve, and also created you into races and tribes that you may understand or identify each other, right. though you may know each other. So I want to emphasize that the reason why God created us in this diversity, it is not because we must come and fight and be at war and perpetual conflict with each other, but to know each other, identify each other in the context of this beautiful diversity. Right. We're wrapping up after this very final question. Your Eminence, the, uh, the 1992 Constitution guarantees freedom of expression and association. And because of that, we have had a proliferation of churches and religious organizations. If you look at the swiftness with which people ascribe religious titles onto themselves and the utterances they make, does it have the potential of putting the nation on a brink of underdevelopment and chaotic situation? Uh, Kuwa <laughs> Okay. So matters of titles um, are there and they come in, dif in different shapes and in different forms and this should not lead us to any confusion at, at all. We must understand that in world, one dimension of our diversity is our perspectives. So even in one religion, you have different, different perspectives. And even in Islam, we have different perspectives. And that's why we have what we call the four Islamic schools of thought of, or schools of jurisprudence, um, the Maliki, the Shafi, the Hanafi, and the Hanbali. And all share in this, from the same scripture, but we share different perspectives. And, this, and for us, diversity in perspective in itself is part of God's mercy for there us. There are utterances as well, some of the things they say uh, which could put us on a brink. Okay. 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 Eh, 
Mais il y a des gens qui ont été très bien. Ils 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 ont été très bien. Yeah, um, in response to this question, I have um, two textual references to make. One of, one of them is the one um, which says that, call unto the will of thy Lord with wisdom and good admonishment. So that in this case, what it means is that it's, it's a guidance for anyone who engages in mission work to be able to be to use wisdom, sagacity. Um, Any time that you want to talk to people to guide people, you have to use wisdom, respect for people um, to be able to guide them. But the other one also is a statement attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which says that even in doing mission work, in expressing your view, he said, make things easy for people and do not make things difficult for people. Give good news and good tidings to people and do not uh, say things that dispels away, away people, that drives people away from you. These are all um, part of the guidance that is given to us for people. Anyone who is godly should be able to do things that brings people close, not that one which drives away people and brings confusion. Your Eminence, thank you very much for your time this morning. We're wrapping up on TV3 New Day, but I'm sure you want to pray for the nation. Uh, let's hear a prayer. Allahumma. Amen. بلدنا عامنا مطمئنا اللهم إنا نسألك أمنا ونعوذ بك من جور كل جائر ومكر كل ماكر وسير كل ساهر وبغي كل باج وأسد كل هاسد وقدر كل قادر وكيد كل كائر وأداوة كل أدوي اللهم رفع درجتنا اللهم رفع درجتنا اللهم أسنا أسنا أعمالنا اللهم أسنا أعمالنا اللهم إنا نسألك أمورا طويلا في الخير مع العافية اللهم اجعل بلدنا غانا بلدنا عاملا مطمئنا وسائر البلدان وعاملنا في أوطاننا ولا تفتنا اللهم ارفع مقتك وقد لبك عنا ولا تواخذنا بما فعل السفعاء منا وختم بحسن خاتمة الناجين والراجين الذين كيل لهم قل يا عبادي اللهم اجعل رئيس جمهورية غنى نانا أكف عدو ونائبه الهاجم من باونيا بسر لبنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرعيته خاشا متسدع من خشية الله وجلك المسال ونضربه على الناس لعلهم يتفكرون والله الذي لا إله إلا هو آلم الغيب والشهادة والرحمن الرحيم والله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس سلام المؤمن المحمد العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله ما يشركون والله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبب له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يشكون والسلام And that's how the cookie crumbles. You've heard from the national chief imam, his unique thoughts about national issues and uh, he advising the nation and praying for same. On behalf of the rest of the team, my name is Johnny Hughes from Fadama, New Fadama, the residence of the national chief imam. We'll see you tomorrow, Friday, but know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it, only you can achieve it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>